Raise your hand if you have ever, uh, if when you speak, you hope you don't offend someone. Now, keep your hand in the air if um, you have ever avoided a particular topic or set of words simply because you didn't know what to use. Looking around, we can see that this is a common experience. And that's natural. We seek to be kind, hands down. Um, but it's important to challenge fear-based reasons for avoiding particular topics, especially topics like queer and trans rights, now more than ever. We are witnessing a genocide, a genocide of queer and trans people that began with language and has ballooned into something much more terrifying. But what if we could change our language? What if we could make it kinder, more supportive? That's exactly what I aim to do with my research. I aim to provide uh, educators with the resources and capacity to know that our schools can support our queer and trans students through micro supports instead of microaggressions by using coded language. Coded language is when we use particular terms in order to invoke a specific imagery with multiple interpretations, creating plausible deniability. Most often we see this used in negative and racially motivated ways through language like uh, welfare queen or law and order. But what if instead of using it to further discrimination, we could use it to further support? Coded language has long been used by queer communities as a way to safely navigate the world. Beyond just being a tool within the community, however, particular language can have drastic impl implications on whether or not queer and trans individuals feel welcome to a space or deter from it. In addition, previous research has highlighted the important role school settings play in queer and trans youth health even long after they have left schools. As such, I will be developing a survey in which participants will be uh, presented with almost identical policy statements, where the only changes have an identity-based language. One statement may say uh, sexual orientation, the other say queer. Participants will then be asked to rate what their sense of belonging would be like in a school with those policy statements. Ultimately, I hope to explore what language resonates, what language honors, and what language speaks to diverse members of our queer communities. Queer communities are as varied as any community. And I want to show policy writers the ways in which we can use identity-based language to show our support for our queer communities. At the end of the day, I want my language to tell queer and trans youth that they are welcomed, that they are valued, and that I support them. I now ask you, what do you want your language to do? Thank you.